Hello everyone, it's Taz. I went to see the original Misfits play at the Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey. So I thought I'd tell you all about it so you can live vicariously through me. We arrived in Newark in the afternoon and checked into our hotel. Here's a view from our fancy hotel. That's the parking garage. And you can't see it in the photo, but there's totally dudes up there drinking on the roof. Party! I gotta say, I've never been to Newark before, but everyone I met there was super friendly, from the guys working at the parking garage, the people working at our hotel, the show, and all the restaurants we went to. All of them were just so nice. Maybe it's because they make Budweiser right there. Shout out to my friend Asad, who we met working in the garage. That guy was a trip. It was great meeting you, dude. So we go to the show. There was a crazy line at the merch booth outside. I heard the line was like that all day from noon till like 9 o'clock at night. Here's the shirt I got. I also got a poster. My mom bought the shirt a little big so I can grow into it. By the way, if you're planning on buying a shirt on eBay and want to know if it's a bootleg or not, I noticed legitimate shirts have these black tags on them, while the bootleg shirts on eBay have white tags. So that's an easy way to tell. I mean, that in price. After getting the merch, we go inside. I get in line to buy a beer. I know I look really young, but I'm totally old enough in dog years to buy beer, FYI. There's only two dudes in front of me in line. They're really tanked, and they're having a problem using their debit card or something. So I'm being cool. I'm waiting a few minutes. Not caring, because I got plenty of time. The dude turns to me. Sorry we were making you wait so long. Want to sip my beer while you wait? He holds his can out to me. Now I'm totally sober, so there's no way in hell I'm drinking from some random dude's can. So I say, Nah man, you don't want to know where my mouth's been. There was an awkward pause and he responds very excitedly, Yes I do! That's a true story. Drunk people are awesome! Okay, here's the famous yonder bag that sealed people's phones in it. Getting the phones in and out was pretty quick and it didn't slow down getting in or out of the show. There were plenty of spots in the hall you could take out your phone if you needed to use it. I know a lot of people don't like the yonder bags. I didn't think they were a big deal and it was kind of nice seeing an audience full of people singing along and getting into the show instead of a sea of people just standing there filming and taking pics. On the other hand, if I wasn't at the show, I'd want to check out all the pics and footage, so... I guess it's a mixed bag. A mixed yonder bag. One thing about going to a show for a band that's been around for a while, it's kind of like a bizarro time machine where everyone's dressed like it's 30 years ago except they're the age they are now. It's not every day you see a woman in her 50s wearing leather pants. And you look great, Meemaw. You totally rock those leather pants. So finally we're watching the show. We're in section 17. The lineup is Glenn on vocals, Jerry on bass, Doyle on guitar, Dave Lombardo from Slayer on drums, and AC Slade on additional guitar. The band sounded great. I heard people say online that uh, it didn't sound so good if you're in the higher up sections, but where we were sitting it sounded great. I like having the extra guitar on stage, it gives them a really full cool sound. They had a lot of crazy energy, the audience was growing nuts. We all had seats but no one sat down the whole time. It was a wild show. Jerry broke his bass over his knee like two or three times, and he slid all the way across the stage on his knees. Three or four times, I'd say. Sorry I didn't get a pics of that to show you, but yonder bag. I'd reenact it for you, but I'm pretty sure I'd end up being rushed to the vet's office. So here's an artistic recreation. Whee! Whee! He didn't actually say we. I took a little creative license there. So the set list was Death Comes Ripping, I Turned Into a Martian, 20 Eyes, Mommy Can I Go Out and Kill Tonight, Vampira, Devil Lock, Where Eagles Dare, London Dungeon, Hybrid Moments, Teenagers from Mars, Earth AD, Horror Business, Hollywood Babylon, Bullet, Who Killed Marilyn, Green Hell, Halloween, Skulls, Die Die My Darling, Astro Zombies, Last Caress. The encore was Night of the Living Dead, Some Kind of Hate, She, Violent World, All Hell Breaks Loose, and they ended the show with Attitude. Alright, so the next day we went to Dinosaur Barbecue. I wasn't really in the mood for a barbecue, but 
I know I'd regret not eating there. The food was good and the service was great, but maybe barbecue isn't the wisest way to treat a hangover. While we were sitting there, we realized we were less than half an hour from Lodi, so we made an impromptu pilgrimage. In Lodi, we visited Lodi High, which was right across the street from the cemetery. So if there was ever a night of the living dead scenario, the kids of Lodi would pretty much get eaten first while the adults would get away. We swung by Lodi Pizza, I really regret being too stuffed on dinosaur barbecue to try Lodi Pizza. We drove by Glenn's old house, didn't stop because who knows who lives there now, and I don't think they want an anthropomorphic dog just randomly showing up at their house. Other notable landmarks in Lodi are uh, the strip club from Sopranos, but my mom wouldn't let me go in there, and this big guy outside of Billiards Hall. Lodi still has a Carvel ice cream, so if you've been craving a Cookie Puss or Fudgy the Whale, just take a road trip down to Lodi and get one. We picked up a Fudgy Whale and took one home. Really wish we had brought our cooler with us, but we enjoyed some nice Fudgy the Whale soup when we got home. Alright, that's a wrap up of my big weekend. Anyone else go to the show?